Hey there, listener name. Ready to dive in? Always. Today, we're tackling a big one, even for us. Amor Fadi. Yeah, it's one of those concepts that really gets into your skin. You guys sent in a ton of stuff about it. A real mix, too. Articles, blog posts, even poems, right? Poems, quotes, the works. Shows how much this idea resonates. Totally. And it's not always an easy one to wrap your head around. No, not at all. I mean, on the surface, loving your fate sounds kind of passive. Right, like just accepting whatever life throws at you. But that's not what we're talking about here, is it? No way. It goes much deeper than that. This isn't about resignation. It's about a kind of radical acceptance. And that's what makes it so fascinating, right? It pushes back against that very human desire to control everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, let's face it, there's only so much we can control. Exactly. So Amor Fati is like, okay, how do we make peace with that? How do we not just endure the stuff we can't control, but actually embrace it? You've got it. Yeah. It's about seeing those curveballs life throws, not as obstacles, but as essential parts of the journey. I like that. It reminds me of, I think it was one of the articles you sent, talked about a blazing fire uh. and how it just devours everything in its path, transforms it all into fuel. Powerful imagery, right? Yeah. And it makes you think about challenges differently. Totally. Instead of fearing the fire, we can learn to harness its energy. Exactly. And that's what I think is so relevant about this whole Amor Fadi thing, especially today. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's one thing to talk about loving your fate when everything's going great. Right. Sunshine and rainbows. But what about when things get really tough, like really, really tough? That's where the real work comes in. And honestly, that's where the Stoics really shine. Think about a figure like Marcus Aurelius. Emperor of Rome, dealing with all sorts of craziness. Exactly. And yet, his writings are full of these reflections on how to navigate hardship, how to find strength in the midst of chaos. So it's about finding the opportunity in the obstacle. You got it. And it's interesting your sources touch on how this idea pops up outside of Stoicism, too. Uh, Nietzsche, for example, talked about becoming a yes-sayer. No, he wasn't exactly known for being, like cheerful and optimistic no not quite but he recognized the power of yeah. saying yes to all of life the good the bad the ugly and not in a naive way right it's not about pretending everything is perfect not at all yeah it's about actively engaging with reality even the tough parts and using those experiences to learn and grow so it's about accepting what is but not in a passive way it's about actively choosing to engage to learn to transform those experiences into something better you nailed it and one of those articles i think it was that one with the sailboat metaphor it really gets into this distinction between acceptance and resignation right because they're not the same thing at all are they nope Amor Fati isn't about just giving up and letting life steamroll you. It's about recognizing that those difficult experiences, they're what shape us. They're what make us who we are. So we're talking about really leaning into those experiences. Yeah. The good and the bad. That's it. And somehow using them to move us forward. But how do we actually do that? Right. It's one thing to talk about it. Right. But how do you actually put Amor Fati into practice? Exactly. Because it's not always obvious, is it? No, not at all. It's a process, for sure. It is. One of the articles, I think it was the, that one with the sailboat, had a good analogy. Oh yeah, tell me if I'm thinking of the same one. You're sailing a ship, right. And the wind and the waves, those are the circumstances. The things you can't control. Right, exactly. Yeah. So Amor Fati, it's not about wishing for calm seas all the time. It's about learning to ride the waves. Yeah, becoming a skilled sailor, no matter the weather. But where do we even begin? You had some practical tools in your notes. Something about a good mantra? What's that all about? Oh man, that one is so good. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so picture this. You're hit with some major setback. What's your first reaction? Uh, I don't know, probably a lot of swearing. Probably, <laughs> but seriously, that initial gut reaction, it's usually negative, right? Totally, why me? That kind of thing. Exactly. So instead of getting swept up in all that negativity, what if you just said, good? Good! Seriously! Like, my world is falling apart and I'm supposed to say, good! It, it sounds crazy. It does. But that's the beauty of it. Because by saying good, you're basically short-circuiting that whole negative spiral. Interesting. You're acknowledging the situation without letting it drag you down. So it's about creating a little space. Yes. A little breathing room. So you can actually respond thoughtfully instead right. of just reacting. Exactly. And from that calmer place, you can start asking better questions. Like, okay, this has happened, now what? What can I actually do about it? So it's about shifting from why me to what now? 
100%. And that right there, that's the essence of Amor Fati. It's about focusing on what you can control, not what you can't. Which actually reminds me of another concept from your research. Oh, yeah. Hit me with that. Masturbation. Masturbation. Okay, that one definitely needs some explaining. Right. It's a bit of a strange word. But it describes this tendency we have to get stuck in how we think things should be. As opposed to how they actually are. Exactly. Like, my train should be here by now, or yeah. my boss shouldn't have said that. My coffee shouldn't have spilled all over my new shirt. Right. But getting upset about it, is that going to change anything? Not really. Yeah. We do this all the time, though, right? We get caught up in these shoulds, but a more foddy, it's about letting go of those shoulds and focusing on what's actually real, what's actually within your power to change. So instead of getting all worked up about how things should be, yeah. we accept reality exactly. and we say, all right, this is the deal. What's my next move? That's it. It's about recognizing you sometimes you just got to play the hands you're dealt right. and focus your energy on what you can actually do, not on wishing things were different. Not railing against the universe. Exactly. It's funny. It makes me think of that Viktor Frankl quote, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. Love that quote. And it seems like Amorphati is all about expanding that space. Yes. So we're not just reacting instinctively, but we can actually choose how we want to respond. You got it. It's incredibly empowering when you think about it that way. It really is. But it does bring up a question for me. Shoot. Is there ever a point where this Amorphati thing goes too far? Hmm. I see where you're going with this. Like, are we supposed to just accept everything? Even things that are wrong, that are hurting people. That's a big one. And it's important to be clear about what Morfati is not saying. Right. It's not about condoning bad behavior. Right. Or just accepting injustice in the world. It's not about that. So it's not about being passive in the face of suffering or just letting bad things happen. Exactly. It's about recognizing that we can't control everything that happens to us. Right. But we can control how we respond. So it's about choosing our battles wisely, focusing on what we can change, and finding ways to navigate the things we can't. You nailed it. Mm. And sometimes that navigation, it means taking action. Right. Speaking out against injustice, mm -hmm. fighting for what's right. So it's not about just sitting back and taking it. Not at all. Yeah. But it is about recognizing that even in those tough situations, yeah. even when you're fighting like hell for what you believe in, you still have a choice in how you approach that fight. So it's about finding that place of inner strength, even when things are really, really hard. Yes. It's about cultivating that unshakable core, that resilience that allows you to face anything without being broken by it. That's powerful. It is. So listener name, as we're wrapping up our deep dive here, I'm really curious, what are your takeaways? What parts of this amorphity idea really resonate with you? And how do you see yourself using these ideas? What opportunities for growth do you see in your own life? Because that's what this is all about, right? It's about embracing the whole crazy journey with all its ups and downs and trusting that no matter what comes our way, we have the strength within us to navigate it. It's about finding that strength, that resilience, and yeah, maybe even learning to love the ride. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive listener name. Mind made of granite, Roman kingpin, philosophies mechanic. Marcus done talk in the ruins of the forum, so solid as marble, mind free like a quarrel. In the Colosseum, clap of reason echo, serenity within, like the flight of a sparrow. Virtue carved deep, it's a disciplined aura. Roman road stretch, meditating on the flora. King from the low, turn the chaos to order. Stoic guys calm through the wounds and the slaughter. The whispers from the valleys to borders Life's but a blade, seek the wisdom of warriors In the library stacks, rolled up scrolls of meditations Face the plague, wrath the nature, Roman tribulations Men clash swords, but the mind remains placid Stoic thoughts run deep in a world so rapid On the battlefield, courage rides with the centaur Meditate at dawn for the day's emperor Still meets flesh, Marcus keeps his composure World might burn, but his heart's granted bolder Turn the chaos to order So what dies calm through the wounds and the slaughter Heard the whispers from the valleys to borders Life's what a blade, seek the wisdom of warriors I'm very aware how quick life can take from you And I've always prepared my mind for the next chapter And what happened with me was I started this thing called front loading So when I was young I used to be a little piece of sh Oh, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. But the second I got my head out of my ass and I realized, man, you can achieve a lot of if you get off your ass and you start moving and you start motivating yourself. 
So I became a self motivator. So I started front loading. And front loading is people, man, you've done so much by 47 because I don't know what tomorrow is going to bring me. So my, my military resume is fat. You know, I did a lot in the military. I did a lot outside the military. I've, I've, I've made money. I've, I've, I've done almost every race out there, hard race in the world. I've broken pull up records. I've done a lot of sh So when these bad times come, and also, not like, like not only that, like work your ass off so so you can enjoy. Yeah, yeah, you're taking a shot. You know, you you may not live to be old, but what if you do? And you worked your ass off when you were able, and you were able to get up early, able to grind. If you front load it properly, the back half of your life is money. And that's what I did. And this is one thing about life. This is why you always must be ready. Always be ready. Never get ready. People go, oh, hey, what are you training for, David? I ain't training for shit. When something pops up, I'm ready. So when Cam popped the fuck up and Cam calls, hey, man, I'm going to be in uh, Las Vegas. You want to go for a run? Sure do. Sure do, brother. <laughs> sure do. While the run sucked, I was ready. We ain't got some steak. Same day. Saying, oh, we worked it out, dude. Whenever me and him are together, you can guarantee it's going to be two people that love each other, but are waiting for the other. People are often confused about stress and responsibility. A person who doesn't make mistakes doesn't make anything at all. Do not be afraid to die but be afraid to live without living. Marcus Aurelius. This quote encourages individuals to embrace life fully and to live each day with purpose and meaning. A high degree of intellect tends to make a man unsocial. When your desires are strong enough, you will appear to possess superhuman powers to achieve. Feelings, whether of compassion or irritation, should be welcomed, recognized and treated on an absolutely equal basis, because both are ourselves. Tishnat Han What's your desire for your family? What do you want? To, what, what do you want as your family? Write that down. What's your desire? Come on, come on. We're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. What about your faith? What do you desire to do? Like I'm not really, you know, I I wake up every morning, three o'clock, first hour of my day, I dedicate it to my walk and talk with God. What's your faith? I'm not suggesting a particular one for you. I'm not telling you what to do. But if you have a faith, what is it? And and, and where how healthy do you want it to be? your desired outcome what kind of fun do you want to have i just go to dubai for fun anytime i want to have fun i just go to dubai that's my spot for fun that's just my spot and then um there's a spot um Escarit in uh, uh mexico that's another spot that i like to go to but it just those are my two spots when i want to go close mexico when i want to go far dubai like when i don't want my phone to work i go to dubai when I don't want to be on the same time zone as everybody else, I go to Dubai to get away. All right. So before we go to the next one, all right, I just need you to know, like you may not have it all now, but when you leave, I need you to know what you desire. Why? Because this is the thing that's going to wake you up and this is the thing that's going to make you go. So I'm putting kids through college, Super Bowl, Dubai, right? So, so every day when I wake up, y'all, I'm driven, driven, driven. And most of you are not driven and you're not driven because you don't have an engine. You don't got an engine. That's not, the only way you stay driven is that you know what you want. You wake up every single day and you go for it. The people who are not driven, they wake up and they clueless. The people who wake up and they don't know exactly what they want to do, they clueless. The people that are not are clear on their life goals, the people that are not clear in every of these areas, they wake up and they wake up whenever they want to, when they wake up sad and they wake up depressed. Why? Because either they don't know what they want or they got this stuff all out of order. Does that make sense? So, so one of the things we want to do is we want to write it down. We want to put it in the right order. Money does not come first for me. I only need money to house and to take. As the ordinary shows of the theater and of other such places 
when thou art presented with them, affect thee, as the same thing still seen and in the same fashion, make the sight ingrateful and tedious. So must all the things that we see all our life long affect us. For all things above and below are still the same, and from the same causes. When then will there be an end? Remember, any person capable of angering you becomes your master. He can anger you only when you permit yourself to be disturbed by him. Time flies. One day you are 30, the next you are 50. Plan now for what you want 50 to look like. When you perform your duty without attachment to the results, you are practicing true yoga. Bhagavad Gita. No matter how hard you work, you can't have everything you want. Eventually, most of us end up settling in some part of our life. Beware of the man who does not talk and the dog that does not bark. Change is inevitable. Progress is optional. Tony Robbins Anyhow, evolve! You're supposed to evolve. You're not supposed to be doing a job for the rest of your life, being one-dimensional. We've been trained to be one-dimensional. We've been trained to what to think, not how to think. Evolve. Given where I came from, I can teach you a thing or two. So it won't take you as long as it took me because I did not know. I had this in me. You are supposed to re evolve. Most people take their greatness, take their talents, take their skills to the cemetery. No, life has no duplicate. You want to live now. You want to take a chance on you. You want to believe in you. Am I making any sense to you? Somebody's waiting on this. Somebody's ready. Somebody's ready to take a chance on themselves. Ah, oh, you got to evolve. What's in you? Make a resolve, make a commitment to get in a community of people that are growing, get a coach that has, has evolved doing what you want to do so you don't take the stuff that God put in you to your grave. That's why Miles Rondo kept on saying, rob the cemetery, rob the cemetery, rob the cemetery. You got so much more stuff in you than you realize. You know how many people you've seen and looked in the mirror at that have so much intelligence and abilities and talents and skills they never put to use for themselves. You're here to evolve. You don't know. You got to take a chance on you. Call forth those things that be not as though they were. Why do I speak about this with such conviction? Because I'm living it. Others talk about it. I'm living it. I have done it. Stick a fork in it. It's done. I've done it. I paved the way. I know what it takes to earn your first million. And I did it before the internet, before Twitter, before Facebook. Whether thou speak in the Senate or whether thou speak to any particular, let thy speech in always grave and modest. But thou must not openly and vulgarly observe that sound and exact form of speaking concerning that which is truly good and truly civil the vanity of the world and of worldly men, which otherwise truth and reason doth prescribe. Whoever does wrong wrongs himself. Whoever does injustice does it to himself, making himself evil. Never expect too high. The more you expect, when it doesn't meet your expectation, the more it's going to hurt you.